Hello, my name is Lauren Jean. Um, if you don't know me, I'm an F2. I want to do surgery. I'm going to be applying for surgical training this year. Um, this video is about my neurosurgery taste a week and what I thought about it, how I got on and whether I'd consider doing it as a career. If you are wondering why I sound like I'm going to be sick all the way through the, the, uh, the vlog bits, it's because I had high premises and I was definitely about to be sick. Hi everyone, um, I'm on my neurosurgery taste a week. I've been doing some really, really cool stuff. So I have just seen an operation on an elderly gentleman who has unfortunately a metastatic squamous cell carcinoma. So he has extensive disease. He has kind of the whole orbit is, is being eaten away by tumor. So what the team were doing, and this was a great example for me of, of team working because you had both neuro and max vax, was they basically removed this whole part of the face um, all of this kind of this kind of shape and, and then they've taken part of temporalis and then sutured that into this space so you've got a base of something that has a blood supply to help with wound healing and then they've taken a skin graft from the thigh to then kind of place over the wound it was really really fascinating surgery unfortunately the gentleman has obviously lost his eye and it is a palliative procedure but it was a really really good surgery to see um, I'm about to go and now see a, the removal of a meningioma, which is going to be really, really fun. So while I've been on my taster week, I've seen a lot of school-based surgery. So this is like removing tumours, things like that. Um, often what they, they do to begin with is they kind of open a, they do a craniotomy. And then as the um, CSF comes out, the brain kind of shrinks down and you're able to navigate it. It's very fine work. It looks very, very risky. I've got nothing but respect for them. It's such an art what they do. Um, I'm really enjoying it, so far anyway. So I've just seen a lady who has a chronic subdural. So that's a bleed on the brain. Um, she's an alcoholic and they're quite prone to those kind of presentations. And what we wanted to do was kind of release the pressure. So we, we drilled into the head. In two places made two burr holes. And I got to do one, it was immense. It was this awesome little drill which kind of goes into the skull and then it locks once it's got through the skull into the cranial vault and then we kind of just suck out very carefully suck out some of the some of the blood what's really interesting with brain surgery which is different than other types of surgery is that the, the sucker we use suckers all the time in surgery suck up blood and fluids and things like that but in the brain you can actually suck up brain so what you have to do is you have to lay a swab and you suck very gently over the swab rather than the brain itself um, I really, really enjoyed it. It was great fun. I cannot believe I got to drill a hole in someone's head. Um, the lady did really well. We left a drain in situ and she's doing really well now. Uh, so I'm just going to drink my coffee and I'm really enjoying my neurosurgery taste a week. Um, as an SHO on neurosurgery, you kind of do the same things that SHOs do everywhere. It's TTOs, it's phlebotomies, all of those kind of things. So I put some cannulas in, I've done that kind of stuff. We've done more around. Um, what I'm really interested in is what you do as a registrar and their job is much more fun. It's clinics, it's theatre um, and obviously you're doing the ward round rather than just being the scribe which is really good fun. I've really really enjoyed it. I, I'm kind of torn between doing cardiothoracics, general surgery, kind of plastics or breast or neurosurgery and this week has really helped me to kind of refine that neurosurgery is just so fascinating and it would be a real privilege to be able to do that. So kind of if we watch the vlog parts of my neurosurgery um, week, the bits where I could film because I was so busy that I couldn't really film very much, um, I loved it. And you can kind of see that when you're watching. It was very interesting. I got to see some really cool things and I loved it. It was it was amazing. It was wonderful. Um, the pathology is so fascinating. The surgeries they do are so interesting. There's an opportunity for you to do so much as a registrar, um, but it does have really heavy on calls. And there are, um, there's an expectation that you will kind of always stay behind to make sure you're getting an additional excess surgeries and making sure that you're there all of the time. So for me, by the end of the week, I'd kind of decided that neurosurgery wasn't for me. And that's not because I don't want to stay late, because when I did cardiac surgery, I would only be rated to stay till half five. And I'd often be there till half six or later, just making sure I got everything done. Because that is kind of how I work as, as, a, as a professional. I can't, I get really anxious. So if, if I don't get everything done before I leave, I worry about it when I go home. So it's just easier to stay and get things done for me. So staying late isn't a problem. 
But the difference between what I would do on cardiac surgery and what I would be expected to do on neurosurgery is that on cardiac surgery, it was my always my choice to stay. I could leave if I wanted. Whereas in neurosurgery, I kind of got the impression that they all are expected to do X amount more surgeries. You know, people are coming in after night shifts to do clinics, to do, you know, to really pick up a huge workload, really heavy on course um, schedule as well, because it's trauma based sometimes. Um, so whilst all that would be fine for me now, when you choose a career, you have to remember you're going, you're looking at, you know, somewhere between seven and nine years, you know, especially depending on how quick you do it of training. And what you don't want to do is you don't want to be three or four years down the line and think, do you know what, this is this is it, I can't take this workload anymore. And I just felt that I just didn't love neurosurgery enough to be able to say, I'm gonna whatever the hours are, I'm gonna work them. Um, I did have a really interesting conversation with my surgical fellow when I was a med student and she had been a um, TNO trainee and she had just dropped out of TNO and she was going to retrain in radiology and she said you know what when I took the job I was going to do TNO I was all about TNO I didn't care about what the workload was like what the work-life balance was about I was going to do it and you know actually over over a couple of years actually the that love of it wore off it was kind of overpowered by the constant cycle of of you know work and you know not being able to go to things and I think you've got to be really sure you've got to be really committed to whatever you want to do if it's going to be that demanding and actually for me you know that it just I didn't love it I loved it but I didn't love it enough I thought to myself can I be happy as just as happy in one of the other specialities like perhaps breast or plastics or something like that or gen perhaps general uh, and the answer is actually I, th I think I could I don't love it so much more for me as long as I'm doing something surgical that's where my main love is um so I decided against applying for um neurosurgery um it was still amazing though I'm really glad that I went and did it I did some cool surgeries I got to see some amazing things uh, and I learned a lot so I'm very thankful that they had me um thank you very much for watching this video uh, if you've got any questions you can leave them at the bottom of the video or if you like you can contact me on instagram at the surgical doctor thank you bye